OBS being a little slow, but we're all fine. And spawning in the bottom left. In the red, of course, representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming. He's cure. And in the upper right, in the blue, he is representing a good game gaming. He is Cyan. And uh, for what it's worth, if um, if Gengar or anyone has uh, has been able to find has a an alpha channeled version of the Good Game Gaming logo, that would be great. Uh, we you know it'd be prettier without the big white background, but that's all I could find. So that's what we're gonna go for. And I you know team representation is important, especially when we have these orgs coming in and supporting the scene. So massive ups to uh, to Gengar for being awesome. I'm actually not too familiar with... Oh, yeah, the GSL. That was a little bit... Um, are you just... Uh, yeah, just send it on Discord. Um, or you can send it to Sushi and he'll get it to me. And I'll get that ready before game number two. But yeah, very much hoping we see a little bit better PVT from Cure. Or TVP we, from Cure here than what we saw against Departing. But I'm well, I'm well willing to attribute that to just a bad day. I mean, players have them. It's sad on occasion when it happens, but it, you know, it happens sometimes. And uh, now we're getting ready to see exactly what Cyan has planned for our Korean Terran player in this series. Now, actually Cyan doing a really good job of delaying this command center. Now, the whole goal here is not, you're never going to kill the command center. Uh, oh, great, great. Sushi's giving it to me. It'll be even prettier for game number two. Um, anyway, um, the whole point of here, delaying this command center, is not necessarily to prevent it from going down. Because it, you'll never delay it. It's not going to happen. But if you can do damage on the uh, the SCV that is building, that is building the command center, and if you can delay it a little bit longer, that will mean that the first adepts that we see coming across the map, they're going to be actually going to be able to delay this command center for a good bit of time. Now, of course, what that means, of course, is Cyan is going to have to drop a pylon and a shield battery into the natural if this was a Reaper build. But I don't believe it was. Yeah, it's just a Marine opener. Coming from Cure, as he is going for a three command center build here in this game number one. So Cure going for just about the greediest option that he can possibly go for. And this is something we've seen enter the meta more and more often over the last, uh, I want to say the last month, the last two months, where really before that, oh, it's going to find his way in and it's going to be delayed to be able to delay the factory. You know, I think the uh, the goal is the command center, but the yeah, factory delay is going to be really nice and he's going to be, able, oh, he's going to see it. And he's going to delay it. Oh, Cyan already getting a lot of damage done here with this SCV that this SCV that realistically should never get nearly th this amount. Now, of course, it does take three uh, three shots to kill an SCV, so it's not going to do a ton, but look at this. Now we have a Reaper out here that will be will maybe be able to curtail the Adept a little bit more, but absolutely not here. And <laughs> look at this. is just so much damage from this one re Adept, and yet will go down. It's been walled off into the main base, but like, two workers. Delayed second, sorry, se delayed second barracks, not second factory. Delayed third command center, and the whole point of this build is in part, yeah, you get three command centers, but you also hit with a really powerful three barracks stim timing. It's a little bit weird. It's something that Byun has been doing a good bit of recently, actually. And Cyan, you know, this build that he's going for with the Dark Shrine, uh, with the DT drops, maybe it's not the best one into a triple command center play because eventually you will have three orbitals, and that is an extra series of scans that's going to be really nice for you. And actually, this will get scouted here as there is a Reaper. And, oh, this is actually pretty cool from Cure because what he did is he did not get his Reaper until, like, much later on into the game. I think the Reaper was, like, the eighth unit built out of the barracks. And what that means is that Cyan felt totally comfortable just putting his, his uh, Dark Shrine there because, I mean, who builds a Reaper that late in the game? And I... It may have been a misclick from Cure, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to work out for him pretty well. All right, so Stim on the way, plus one on the way here. As Cure's looking to hit that really powerful Stim combat shield timing, and Cyan is still building some uh, DTs to try to make something happen here. We should probably see one go on into the natural, and oh, so we're going to see Archon drops. And with the lack of a Raven, these Archon drops actually have the tremendous potential. Now, I would like to see two Archons. That does tend to do a little bit better. And with the actually really well-placed shield, or a real really will place missile turrets. Science not really going to be able to get much done here. But there we go. We're going to see a second uh, DT or a fourth DT get warped in. So, two Archons. They're going to try to get some damage done. That being said, the where does Cyan go from this? He has gotten nothing done with this uh, DT build. And yes, he did a lot of damage to Cure in the early game. Yes, he delayed that third command center for quite a while. As well as the second barracks. He caught a couple workers. He forced, uh, he forced more SCVs to not mine. All of these are salient points and useful things to talk about. But at the end of the day, 
Cyan does want to get something done with this. This is not this is not the type of build you can kind of go do and get no kills and get nothing done. But now it's just going to shave off a decent amount of this army. And with some nice micro here, we're going to see a bunch of Marines go down. And of course, anything that Cyan can do to cool down, to, to uh, make the army of the Terran player a little bit less powerful is going to be really nice for him because he does not have charge done. He does not have that many gateways. He only has three. We're going to have to see some more get added here. But... Yes, there are defensive DTs, but how many scans do we have on the map? We have, what, one, two, soon. So we have two scans on the map here. So theoretically, oh, no, the, oh, the Archon's going to go down. And now Cyan, what does he have to defend? This he really doesn't. I mean, we're going to see a shield battery overcharge go down. But three three Zealots, a Stalker, and a Dream is not a defensive idea for our t uh, for our Protoss player. Not in this game, as the Stalkers will get warped in only to their doom, and yes, uh, is Cure going to end the game with this? No. Is he going to kill the third base with this? No, not with the Immortal showing up, but that is a lot more than he expected to get. Getting those two Archons and that War Prism is so extremely devastating for the hopes here of Cyan, as now he has to commit so much more to make sure that he can defend against a Terran player that started his third base at 2 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Oh my god, indeed. So now we have plus one armor on the way, combat shields on the way, uh, concussive shells are on the way, and this bio army that Kier had that he hit with this stim timing, yes, it didn't kill a base. I've seen Beyond do that, but that was a different game, and it was kind of a weird game. But it got it, it traded very well here. As has lost 2,000 resources to the 950 of his opponent. And actually, yeah, let's take a look at that, because we have battle report enabled now. Take a look at that. Nine Marines. Okay, it doesn't even include the, the Archons. That's a little bit of a waste. But yeah, we lost 600 gas of Archons in this trade as well. As well as everything else. And uh, yeah, that's 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 something. Now, of course, we do have a bunch of immortals here. Charge is now done. Uh, Sign is, I believe, on like six gateways. Uh, yeah, six gateways. So he is going to be able to pump out the Zealous that he needs to make this next ult happen. But the question is now, with how much damage he took in that initial push, when he lost those Archons, when he had to build that much more, will he be able to deal with attacks on multiple positions as his army is there defending the third and now instead he's just going to have that pylon depowered which means blink is going to be slowed down we're going to lose a cyber core as well maybe even an extra gateway and the army of cyan is not really well positioned to deal with this i mean there are very few ranged units they're not going to they, they cannot blink against this so this everything one gateway one cyber core one pylon will all go down here for absolutely free here for cure in this game number one and he is moving from strength to strength. We will see a second eBay get added. Armor get added as well. So here, yeah, he's going to have a little bit of a delay before he gets into his 2-2. But look, his he's going to have upgrade parity with his opponent. He's actually going to have upgrade lead with his opponent. And he has enough army supply now to have two armies out on the map. Army on the left, army on the right. And uh, actually, moving this observer seems like the best way to actually just lose that observer. But no, Kira not really paying attention for the moment. And now Kira does have to be careful because this is one disruptor. But instead, he's just going to target it down here. Unfortunate positioning there from Cyan. Nothing to buffer. Now we're going to have the army running on in. These immortals firing for all they're worth. But all the zealots are behind them. The archons, they're stuck in the wall as well. One archon, one immortal goes down immediately. Rome is going to get targeted down as well. And oh no, it looks like Kira has just broken Cyan here. He's up 60 army supply. Stimming on into the natural. The immortal is going to get targeted down. There are no shield batteries here and GG here he's gonna take game number one well that was game number one when you lose your archons in the middle of the map it's really hard to defend you really don't get that damage you were looking for because make no mistake about it a DT opener for our Protoss player is not just a tech it's not just an expand build it's not just something you want to do and you don't really care whether you get any damage done like a two gate three gate blank uh, you have to get damage done with this. It is a significant commitment. It, it puts your tech behind. And yeah, he got a little bit of army. But because he lost those two Archons and then had to warp in more to defend. And he actually lost a decent amount of that before it was e even able to help him defend. Well, that just meant that he Sion was so far behind in the mid game. That, well, supply wins games. And when you saw Cure up 60 total supply, it's not all that great. But as we sit here out of game number one, I should, of course, point out that thing. That, that fancy animated graphic. We'll be preparing for our next stream Raiders battle. Uh, we're probably going to do that after game number two of this series, depending on how things go. Did I, I did not. There we go. Pillars of Gold will be our second map. Yeah. <laughs> Losing that War Prism is not great. But, you know, Cyan absolutely showed signs of life there. Getting that much damage done with that single Adept is... I think that is more damage done than I've seen a single Adept get in... Ever? Yeah, let's go with Ever, because you certainly have not seen it in a while. But, of course... Add units to the battle. We're going to do it after game number two, most likely, will be our next battle. As uh, It's going to be about 15 minutes. We might do it after our um, after the third game. We're going to have to see. 
<laughs> as our admin is uh trying to do things and he's just got sitting here on a uh, he got he he got lively bugged himself. All right, our players are ready here for game. Well, at least Cyan's ready for game number two. And it will be on Pillars of Gold. It's going to be a little bit bigger map. It's going to be a little bit uh, easier to sustain, to deal with aggression because the rallies are a little bit longer. But on the flip side, the third base is not the easiest base to hold. There's a little bit more area around it that you can uh, expand on into. If you take the linear third, uh, suddenly you're dealing with Terran drops in maybe two different positions. It's de definitely pros and cons in each of each map. But I'm interested to see where Cyan likes to go with this. Because, again, this is his map pick. It is loser's map pick. So we're not exactly sure exactly how he's going to be able to do that. Uh, what what he wants to go for? Of course, Cure is most likely the favorite in the series, but uh, so I've seen some great games from Sign in the past. I hope to see some more ones. He got a lot of done, damage done with that Adept earlier on, and now we're going to have to see exactly what he's got going for him here in uh, game number two. But first, of, first and foremost, I got to actually... Um, update the, the GGG logo because I forgot to do that. And yeah, apologies. I could have asked Sushi, but I forgot. I didn't realize it was not great. But now we go. All right. Let's get into it. And spawning. Now let's get into it. Spawning in the bottom left. In the blue, down one game to zero. For good game gaming. He's Saiyan. And his opponent in the upper right, in the red, up one game to zero, in this best of five. He is, for Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Cure. Yeah, honestly, good game gaming is just kind of fun to say, but it's also a really good casting warm-up because, uh, you know, when we're getting, when you're getting ready to talk and talk slow and talk fast and modulate your voice and do all those things, a common vocal warm-up on top of just making sounds and making sure your face is warm is to do tongue twisters. You know, Sister Sally uh, sells seashells by the seashore. Uh, Peter Piper picked a pick of Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. You know, it's things that are difficult to say that get your mouth limber and used to things. And good game gaming, it's not as hard, but it does kind of sound like a tongue twister. So it's a little bit fun to say. As we once again see Cure, he's opening with a Marine opener here. He's really not showing all that much interest in getting all that much done with a Reaper. And this is, again, an evolution we've seen in the uh, TVP matchup. Man, I, oh. Sorry, I will speak slower, Wang. Sister Sally sells seashells by the seashore. But I'm just so excited because Cyan and Cure, there's some, well, Cure is actually one of my more favorite players. I will never forget the, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, IEM Katowice Open Qualifiers in 2018, maybe? Where you had a North American qualifier and a Korean qualifier and a European qualifier. And uh, yeah, I think there were four qualifiers all taking place in the span of 24 hours. And Cure, he has always been an online warrior. So he goes and he fails to qualify through Korea. And ow, we have two double Reaper build. Reactored Reapers coming out from Cure in this game number two. This is something I have, I can safely say I've never seen before. Reactored Reapers into a third command center two minutes and 40 seconds into this game. What in the world is Cure going for in this? I have never seen this. I'm excited to see how this one works out. But to finish the story as we wait for things to maybe get a little bit more active... Cure goes, and he fails to qualify through Korea, I believe was the first qualifier is how that worked out. And then he fails to qualify through North America, and he has been up for ages at this point. He gets really close in both of them. Is this... <laughs> I, you know what? I don't think I've seen Mario do reactor, reactor Reapers into a quick third in TVZ as well. I don't I don't think I've seen that. Again, reactor Reapers... Well, I guess he's only getting two of them. So... Hmm... Well, uh, the one thing here is, uh, Cyan, while he did lose that Adept, he does know about this. He does know about these Reapers. So, he should be taking some defensive precautions. Now, he will lose this probe, but he, he has the one stock here. The question is, how many probes does he lose exactly? Nice citizen, citizen's arrest there as one probe. Well, another probe will go down, but the Reaper will go down as well. And, uh, you know what? A Reaper is there microable, but only when they're not walled, blocked up in a corner. No one puts baby in a corner, but sometimes the Reapers put themselves. All right. 
Robo's now on the way as we are going for a four gate blink all in here from Cyan in this game number two. And I think this Reaper should be able to scout it. Uh, now, granted, all the gates, all the extra gates are in the front. So if the Reaper never goes to that, and he won't, because once again, the probes, they're going to get it. Okay, well, the Stalker's going to get the final kill. But man, MVP probes here from Cyan. Absolutely. Well, as soon as he, there we go. He's mining from him once again. These drone pools, these probe pools have been just so good for our Cyan Protoss player. Although I guess this is more of a blue and a Cyan's more of a teal color. But yeah, you, you, you take what you can get. Gengar, I think you should make your player uh, only use the, the color Cyan or Teal as their player color for the rest of Eternity because their name is Cyan. <laughs> but anyway, now we do have four Stalkers finding their way across the map. Warp Prism is on the way as well. And now we have more and more Stalkers getting warped on in here. Of course, Blink is done and look at this cure. He's going for this Mass, uh, mass Rax attack once again, but this time... Well, we're going to see a bunch of Stalkers get dropped on into the main base here. And they will be able to blink once they're in the main base, of course, because they're going to get dropped on in here, giving them a little bit more micro ability. Or not. I was wrong. Or not. All right. So that is a lot of blink Stalkers here. And look here. Most of his army is on the other side of the map. So he will absolutely struggle to make a defense. Do we have any... We have a bunker with one Marine inside, and that is just going to be just about it. It's all these Stalkers. We're going to have Blink on into the main base here. We're going to see the reactor go down immediately. I think Tech Labs, uh, eight different add-ons, will be an immediate target here. Now, of course, SCVs have been pulled, and Stim is done. you got to remember, Stim and Plus One are done. So these Stalkers, they may not trade at quite as well, but every time Stim is triggered, that is unhealable damage. Nine workers have died immediately, but now we do have the Marines. They're going to find their way into the natural here, and that means Cyan is going to absolutely lose his mineral line. The question, though, is whether he can do enough damage in return here. He is only on two bases. His opponent has three orbitals, and the SCVs are going to get pulled once again, but not quite in time, as now we, the Stalkers are going to blink. They will be recalled backwards, but not before 21 probes have died. So, yes, it was looking good for Cyan, and it may still look good for Cyan if he is able to actually get the amount of damage that he looks for out of this. Cyan is a Scion of the Protoss race. But uh, now we're going to have to see whether Cure has enough here. Now, Cyan, of course, he's up in army supply just a little. But these Stalkers, they had to go home. Cure has plus one. He has Stim. Combat shields are mostly done. Medivacs are on the way. And Cyan, it just really feels like he is just in taking the downside of every single tech build order, uh, build order exchange that has happened. He goes for four gate blink all in, and his opponent sneaks 12 Marines into his base and Stims and kills 21 workers. He goes for a DT opening against a three command center opening. Now he's going to blink on in here, though. And he is up 10 army supply. Now, the, the SCVs will have to get pulled. Combat shields is done. Concussive shells will be done soon. And actually, you know what? Cyan may be able to break on through here. The army of the Terran player is not all that big. I mean, the supplies are relatively even. But the medevacs will be able to keep everything alive. And because Cyan had to spend so much time killing off the SCVs that were just right on top of him. Well, he was not able to trade off well with the army. And here with that... De that uh. I don't know if we can call it a desperation scan because it's not really a desperation per se. He's still in a good spot. He's going to say, okay, Cyan, you don't have a third base. You don't have a third base, and that means that all I have to do is defend here. You're not teching it behind this. You're not doing anything scary behind this. As long as you don't kill me with this, I'm going to be very happy. So now we're, we'll saw the Stalkers. They will go on forward once again. It looks like another bunker is going to try to get targeted down, but of course not really going to happen. And Marauders, they have Concussive Shell now. They have plus one, so they trade incredibly well against this Protoss army as they are just going to be able to tag things. Anything that tag dies, unless, of course, it gets it gets blinked on backwards. And Cure, he's now getting active across the map, and maybe these four Zealots will be able to get enough done, but they don't have charge. So this army from here that's just sitting here should be able to do enough. As they, the Zealots, they just get tagged, they get slowed, and they will not be able to kill the requisite amount of workers to really make this worthwhile, and they will be get picked up. And now Cure, he's on the other side of the map. Oh, nice pickoff, though, getting one medevac that really diminishes the total health of this army. And more and more and more units are getting warped in, but they are slow Zealots, and they are even slower because of concussive shells. So we see Cure, he's just targeting the Stalkers down, and once the Ze once the Stalkers die, well, the Zealots are okay. And he's going to get the Immortal. The Immortal is getting... Uh, coming on out here and it will pop out okay shield battery overcharge will keep this robo alive so having this immortal is incredibly valuable it means these marauders are maybe not quite as scary as they once were but there we go shield battery is here we need more though we need more shield batteries and for his part cyan has done a good job of rebuilding his workers he's on 41 workers now not mining as much gas as he could possibly be but 
you know, he, he needed the mineral income, so I expect, expect to see him go back into that soon if this game progresses longer. And yeah, the, the GGG logo is honestly really sexy. I will absolutely agree with that. Cure is also a very sexy player, and I love from what we've seen from Cure this year, the fact that he's actually shown uh, results in offline tournaments, because, I mean, look, he is this online warrior. He just does so well in online tournaments. And then he actually did well in the GSL. He made a finals um, for the first time in, like, four or five years. So, wow, yeah, I, I think the last GSL final he made was 2015. No, he didn't even make that. He made round of four. Anyway... Now, we do have the army of Cure here. It's sitting out on the side of the front, and Cure doesn't really care uh, whether he kills Cyan at this point. I mean, he would like to. Yeah, that's great. Move on to game three, but he has the third base. He's taking the third base now. He has mules. He's up seven workers against a Protoss player on Blink Stalker Immortal with uh, charge lots. I mean, that is not a good composition. That is not a long-lived composition in this game. Yeah, Cure's 2020 was insane. Uh, and then, of course, we had G the GSL Super Tournament, but yeah, you always have, everyone has bad games. All right, now the Stalkers will blink forward, looking to chase this army from Cure down. But Cure, he's just going to be able to escape. So we do have the Medivacs. They're going to get on out here. Stim will allow him to complete. But now, okay, this War Prism not getting a whole lot done. It's going to get targeted down as well. All right, so now we do have this army coming on in once again. Oh, did the Rubble go down? Did I miss that? The Rubble went down. Okay, I was kind of, I was not expecting that Rubble to go down. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the Robo going down here, that's a big deal. It's only two only two Immortals that exist on the map here. And look at this, Cure, he's found the inside track. So he can actually do a really good job of separating the army from the shield batteries. And that is uh, really problematic here. Although he may just choose to go on into the main base once again. <laughs> and Cure seems to be of the opinion that maybe there are going to be some Colossus that exist. So we do have the one Viking just to do something. I don't really know what. But they are the Zealots will charge on in here, but they don't have upgrades. Double Forge is now on the way, but it's Double Forge on two bases. The Immortals, they're going to get stimmed upon. Immortals will go down. Everything's going down here. And Cure, he's simming for all he's worth. GG, Cure! He's got a 2-0 lead. And, well... I think what we're going to do here, I'm going to tell Mage to pause a minute because we got our next battle all, already up. All right. So, our next battle is ready in two minutes. We're going to see what's up. Yeah, we got we got plenty of people here. Let's do it. We can, we can win this easy. So, let's go on into the battle. Hey, it's Captain Canuck. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a great... We've already had some good games from Cyan and Cure. We're going to have Dream versus Time Later and then a Grand Finals. Yes, he made it through the uh, he made it through the European qualifiers eventually. It was like a 24-hour staying up. All right. Captain Canuck, he's a captain of Canucks, but I am a captain of the Stream Raiders here. It looks like half the army is going on the wrong side. Oh, no. It's a, bo it's, it's a boss thing, and uh, only half our skits are fighting this. This is not... I can't see this working out well, but you know what? It's doing something. Oh, well, I'm dead. Crap. Um, come on, skins. Do what you're supposed to be doing here. <laughs> oh, no. Things are a little bit misplaced, but it looks like at the cost of many lives, at the cost of many, 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 many lives, it's going to get taken down. There we go. <laughs> it seems many of us have died. All right. Hey, I got a tank. Nice. But we, what do you all get here? Who wins? Sushi. He gets a pal. Ooh, paladins. What do paladins do? I don't really know. And Dust gets gold. That's fun. Back to map here. What is the exact... Where are we going to go next? Where are we going next, friends? Do we go? Here. We get a loyalty gold chest. We get a bronze chest. I think we go this way so we can get whatever this is. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, actually, I know we have to go here. Never mind. All right, so there we go. That's all done. And let's get back to the thing. All right. So, Death Aura will be our third map of the day. Cyan, not sitting all that pretty but absolutely still has a chance to come on back here. And realistically, I think he has that chance. Game one, 
he came on the backside of build orders. Game number two, he came on the downside of build orders. And I'm hoping that he's maybe going to be able to read what Kira is doing just a little bit better. Uh, figure out what Kira is doing just a little bit better. And then actually respond appropriately. When your opponent goes for this uh, extra lob, uh, this extra barracks attack, for example, you don't maybe want to move out with your entire army and worry about that. Uh, I don't think he saw that, though. The Reapers were weird and that threw him off guard. Um, but I'm hoping we see maybe just a more middle of the road play from Cyan in this game number three. He's shown that he has a, a incredible early game unit control. But he's been in these positions where that didn't end up really mattering at the end of the day. But all that matters now is that game number three, it's loaded up and ready to go. And spawning in the bottom right, in the red, for Dragon Phoenix Gaming on match point. He's cured. And his opponent in the upper left, in the blue. Good game gaming. He's cyan. And I just realized why we're getting the wrong player nameplates. Because uh, there was a setting for when I was doing a lot of replay casting. So we're going to fix that. There we go. Yes, uh, that is always my goal. Team, see, uh, it's actually funny. I've, had, I've, I've talked about this a decent bit on my stream, uh, talking to other people. Uh, people in the scene um but i i am very big into team uh what's the word? what do you want to call it team notice team uh representation within the scene not that like yes we have we need to have teams but i believe very passionately that the teams that we have that do so much for the scene i mean they sh they need to be very much spotlighted over the course of every broadcast over the course of everything that happens because I mean, this scene doesn't really survive without player people like Gengar and Sushi and Dricket from Exxon and Magnetics for Genesis Gaming and etc. 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 These small, bigger teams, smaller teams, everyone around. I mean, having these teams, having these people that are so passionate about StarCraft that they want to put their money where their mouth is. And yes, eventually, I mean, ideally, these teams are breaking even, but not all of them do. And it's easier to make even if you say, hey, look, sponsor. My teams are act like, look, our sponsored information is getting there. So, yeah, I try to do whatever I can when I'm doing any sort of broadcast. Um, generally, I act I tend to make a uh, a logos mod. I didn't have time for that this time, so we don't have team logos uh, on here. I try to do that. Didn't have didn't have a chance this time. And yes, that is correct. I updated the score. I just updated it incorrectly because uh, your caster doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> As we do have a proxy coming on in from Cyan in this game number two, but he has hidden it behind the fact that he's gotten a nexus. So, will this be Stargate? It will be. Of course, this is Stargate after Warp Gate, so why in the world would Kier ever think that this is a proxy Stargate? He wouldn't. I mean, realistically, I mean, actually... And yeah, the the the, the pylons are there, too. Cyan, he is oversupplying himself to make sure that he gets what he wants. And this is, once again, the triple orbital build. And you know what? I really like the... Yes, uh, Drockster, this is live. So, Kira's gone for the same build three times in a row. Uh, I guess he meant to get Reapers the first time, and he didn't. But anyway, I really like this. Are we going to see the... Okay, no. This is just going to be Proxy Oracle. Man, I want something fresh. I, I guess I got some French fries tonight. I guess that's close enough to being fresh from the oven. But anyways, Proxy Oracle on the way here. And this could work out either really well or really poorly for Sign. It's very coin flippy with how the game is right now. On the one hand... Here, if he moves out with things, well, he's just going to lose the mineral line. There are no, uh, because, look, he's not really looking to put, to keep Marines in his mineral lines. On the other side, on the flip side, though, this is a three barracks opener. And what this means is there, there are a lot of Marines that can potentially defend this Oracle. However, well, we don't even have a factory done yet. It's only two, it's only two barracks for the moment. We will see a third go down soon. And that means there are no widow mines to be worried about. And where are the Marines? Okay, so well, let me see. One, two workers will go down. Two workers will go down. Two workers will go down. There we go. Two workers go down. A couple of Marines as well. And you know what? Actually, if the if the Oracle can take just some pretty good fights and get a lot of Marines, that's going to be really nice for him too. Because, well, I mean, we know Kira's going for the push. Kira, Pure has gone for the same build three games in a row. It's something that Beyond really likes to do. What is this probe doing here? I don't really know. But um, anyway, this is a build that Beyond really likes to do. And eight, being able to shave off Marines 
from this aggressive force is really nice. It, it makes the push happen later or less powerful. And that uh, the later push it gives Cyan the opportunity to have a blink to be able to defend. If it happens less powerfully, well, maybe he can just have what he needs to defend here. And now, here we'll find this probe. Okay, the probe will go down as it looks, I guess, was looking to scout. But he also sees that there is a third base here from Cyan. And Cyan, this is the best he has looked in all the game. How did that Oracle <laughs> fly through there? Fly through the Terran's main base. Uh, just like that. But anyway, this is the most powerful that Cyan has looked in a series. This is the best that he has looked. He has not gone for any sort of crazy aggression. Now, he does have 3-gate blink behind this. So he will, well, 3-gate stalker. No blink yet. As I say that, Cyan. He's opening the floodgates. We're going to see some aggression here. But this time, this time, Cure may have been kept at home enough. So Cyan, he does have his third base just about done here. Finishing. This is honestly a, this is a early, uh, this is a third nexus that is timed on the earlier side of how the, how the uh, next I tend to get built. Uh, so, Cyan is in a really good economic position there, but also, we got this proxy gate in the middle of the map, and we're going to see four stalkers at a time get warped in with Blink as they try to get up, get aggressive here, but again, plus one's done, Stim is done. I don't know if I like this from Cyan once again. I mean, I feel like when your opponent, yeah, they go greedy, but they also push in for this really quick Stim, a really quick uh, ground army, what you got to do is you just got to defend it and then counterattack. Sitting here and trying to get aggressive into this, it feels like it hasn't worked for Cyan thus far, and I feel like I have not seen it work out all that well when Protoss players try to go for it, but actually this may be a really good timing for Cyan as the army of Curates on the map just a little bit. Now these Stalkers will show themselves, and there we go. Nice, nice vision there from Curie. says, okay, I see what's happening here. I saw the station trap go down. Not really going to be all that big of a deal as the army stims forward. Again, plus one stim. Marine Marauder does a, fights really well against all these stalkers, but for the first time in this game, at or first time in the series, Cyan, he is actually holding his supply lead at six minutes into this game. So now, of course, the Blink Stalkers, more and more of them will get blinked in, and they're just looking to do what they can. Now, shave off this army. The Zealot is not really going to do a whole lot outside of tanking damage. That is all Cyan really needs here. But soon, charge will be done. Soon, plus one will be done, and we do have three more gateways, so I think we're on... Yeah, we're going up to six total gateways here. And that means that, well, you know what? <laughs> when you have a Terran player going for these aggressive options, lots of bio, getting just a lot of charge lots before the Terran gets to like 150 supply is actually just a really good opportunity to just absolutely annihilate the Terran army, then go from there. Granted, though, this push that will eventually be coming out of Cure is a little bit more powerful than your standard plus one stim combat shield timing because there is, it's going to be a 1 1 uh, timing, which means that the Zealots will not be quite as impactful as they once were. On the flip side, though, Storm is on the way. Plus one is just going to be about done, so... Cyan, if he's able to hold out until Storm, he's going to be in a really good spot, because ghosts are really far away. Alright, okay, now this uh, gateway is going to get targeted down. Gateway will get the powered Stargate as well. And we should see more, some more gateways. There we go, more gateways from Cyan. As he's just doing what he can to try to delay this push from Cure, but I'm not even convinced that Cure really wants to do all that much of a push. I mean, it's going to be nice, and he's probably going to do something with this army on the map, but... I mean, look, he's still building three SCVs at a time, multiple Widowmans at a time. He's getting into his plus two upgrades. He has put himself in a really solid economic position. There we go. Even Ghost Academy on the way. But Storm is just about done. And if Cyan can micro his High Templars and his War Prisms properly, he's going to be in a pretty good spot here. As now we do see uh, Widowmines go down. Oh, hey, Cyan's going to find a little bit of an opening into this third base. But I think he's going to have to try to find his way out on the left-hand side and then maybe recall because this is just going to be a full surround here from Kira, not a, not a, yeah, there we go, Kira will not be able, or, excuse me, Sand will not be able to escape this, and Kira, well, he's gonna get a stalker. But look at this, fourth base is already done here from Cyan. He has plus one armor on the way, four more, four more gates on the way, he's going up to 11 total gateways, no desire to move into any further tech than Charge Lot Immortal Archon Storm, which is a powerful composition up until Kira gets to about 150, 160 supply, until ghosts are on the field, until these things that Kira is at. And now we run into, run into this issue where Enhanced Shockwave exists. Ghosts are on the field. Suddenly, Archons are not nearly as powerful. The Charge Lots are not nearly as powerful, especially with how many Widow Mines Cure already has. So, really, it's up to Cyan now to take really good fights. And he has fallen behind in the supply count purely, primarily because of the fact that I, he was floating just a little bit, not really spending warp ins into army, instead building static defense. Building that second Robo. Building that Robo Bay. Getting on into further tech here that I was kind of wanting to see him go on into a little bit earlier and this oracle by the way has been incredibly useful as we oh, another proxy yeah science saying look i don't need i don't need no stinking warp prism let's just go and uh, put gateways on the other uh, it, 
Okay. <laughs> Cyan, two proxy gateways on the map here. As he's taking a fifth base. Cyan, he's just saying, look, you know, give me an inch. I will take two miles. Or uh, give me a centimeter. I'll take two kilometers, I guess, is the uh, equivalent thing for those of, uh, those of you not watching from America who don't speak freedom units. But there we go. With this uh, zealot run by, not really getting a whole lot done. I do like this bunker here from Cure. This is something that we saw Tager really start to do uh, back when Tager re-entered the GSL. Um, and, you know, I think we, maybe we saw some players before that, but I think I remember Tager was the first one that it got like, really commented on in a GSL broadcast. But anyway, Warpins on the right hand side. Warpins eventually on the left hand side. And Cyan has got a decent army here. Those EMPs, though, are going to be really nice. That first storm is going to absolutely whiff. How many more storms do we have? It looks like we have five total storms, four in the War Prism, and one without. And hey, you know, the, the High Templar didn't die, so we'll have an opportunity to get some more storms on in. And look at this. We're just going to see Zealots running out into the third base, into the fourth base here. And as long as Cyan is able to survive, and I mean, he should. Storms are good things, uh, really good defensive tools. He's going to be pretty happy. Now, we do see, of course, the shield batteries will run out of their shields because of these. Okay. Ah. Okay. Storm 1 lands pretty nicely. We're going to have to see how the rest of them do. As 17, 18, 19 workers have gone down. Granted, though, these storms are just not hitting. The EMP is on top of everything. And there are no storm. Okay. There's one storm left on the field. That storm is going to land on top of all the ghosts. But only one dies at the moment. The fourth base here of Cyan's going down. And oh, now we have double Colossus. No extended thermal lance yet. This storm's gonna be good though. Cure is not paying attention. And now we're seeing the result of things. That being said though, Cure, he's at 40 army supply. And yes, he did lose 21 workers. But hey, Cure, Cyan lost 14 as well. And now we have the second rally of Cure. It's on the way onto the other side of the map. Four SCVs on the way at a time. This base did not go down even if workers did die. And what is what is Cyan doing with this? This is an interesting composition here as a... Colossae will lose a little bit of, take a little bit of damage, and here he's setting up for a really big surround. I think. Absolutely. Now, Cure will not be able to be, Cure will not be able to get on into this main base of Cyan, and man, what a game we have for our third game in this series. Cyan, he took the really poor trade in terms of build orders in the first two games, and he kind of lost them because of that. But now we have the game on into the late game. We're 12 minutes in. Cyan, he has looked better than he has in any game this series. I guess he's fully warmed up now. Double Colossus production as we are going up to four Colossus here. And now we have, the, yeah, we have this quad drop here from Kira sitting on threatening Cyan. But, okay, uh, Cyan should be able to, should warp in some uh, stalkers here to deal with this. As the scan often preempts a drop. But now we have the drop coming on in here. It looks like it's just going to be a full recall to half the army. Stalkers are back. And that's going to be all she wrote for this drop of Cure for the moment. But once again, the recall has been used, forced. Which means that, well, for a decent period of time, it's not going to be available. Again, Cyan is going to have to play a little bit more defensively for the next, I don't know, two, three minutes. Or, no, not two, three minutes. Uh, until the recall comes back up once again. So, for the next, what, 40, 35, 40 seconds? Which, it can be a long amount, a good period of time in how th these games work. Because now Cure, he's got this threatening army on the left-hand side of the map. So he says, okay, look, I am forcing part of Cyan's army here on the left-hand side of the map. I, that means I can be really active on the right-hand side of the map with my main army. Maybe do something there. Now, how many Vikings does he have? He's sitting on six Vikings for four Colossus. You generally would want something closer to 12. And the math is about three Vikings per Colossus. But on the flip side, I mean, sure, he's maxed out. He can't afford to trade. This drop actually coming on in to this fourth base here. EMP is on top of everything, on top of the Warpins as well. So Cyan's going to have to maybe commit a little bit more to this. But look at this, though. Cure maybe not taking the best fight on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, though. But the High Templars, they're out of energy. It's no Storm energy. Okay, there we go. Oh, Storms, though, my goodness. All those Storms are going to be incredible. That being said, though, Cyan looks like he will finally lose his fourth base. Uh, where are we on Warpins? That's actually a good question. Yeah, Cyan will lose the fourth base, but he's going to take a really good bet here on the right-hand side. But despite that, suddenly he's down 60 total supply. As Magnetic says, Toss has to lose. I really hope that's not the case. I want to see more games like this. This has been a really good game here from Cyan. Even it looks like Curious finally found the position he's looking for. This quad drop is just doing so much here. And the drips and drabs of Warpins that Cyan has been putting into defend it, just really not getting what they want. These storms, I mean, it doesn't. The storms don't do a lot when every unit has their personal healers. That's exactly what we see here. Now Cyan is taking a fight on the right hand side as well. Not doesn't look like he was paying attention as he lost all the energy on the High Templar, and it's just getting targeted down, going from bad to worse here. There we have it, GG. Cure is going to be our first finalist in this tournament. 
I really thought Zion had a choice as well. That or had a chance as well. That looked really good. 